What's up guys? Welcome back to Core HTML Mastery. We're going to be talking about divs and spans in HTML. In my earlier days of learning HTML, I perhaps completed a basic course like the one you're taking now. And I thought that I knew quite a lot in terms of the different elements that a HTML developer would use. And to an extent, I was right. HTML is not really that complicated. But I did have one burning question. Any time that I loaded up a HTML document that had been created by a professional developer, I couldn't help but wondering, what are all of these divs and spans? They were absolutely everywhere and it hadn't come up in the basic courses on HTML I'd taken. And furthermore, they didn't really seem to do anything. If we take a simple example here, let's have a Hello World document here and let's wrap it inside a div and refresh, nothing happens. So if the div doesn't do anything, why was every single HTML document I looked at absolutely littered with divs? And it wasn't just divs, spans were used with quite a high frequency as well. And once again, if I refresh, absolutely nothing happens to the content inside the span. So what is the point of all of these divs and spans? Furthermore, is there a difference between a div and a span? Because Right now, it just looks like neither of them do anything, right? So there's no real difference between a div and a span at this stage. Now, the first takeaway here is that divs and spans aren't actually really meant to do anything. And we will qualify that because there is a difference between a div and a span. But to begin with, let's just assume they don't really do anything apart from demarcate a section of content. Imagine, for example, we have a div and inside that div, we have a few different elements. And just to keep it simple, we could just have three paragraphs. In fact, let's call them paragraph one. Let's end that. And let's just copy and paste that a couple of times. So we actually have three paragraphs. And notice they are all inside the div. So div is unique in the sense that it can be broken up by other elements to an extent. So for example, inside this paragraph tag, we wouldn't suddenly have an image link. We can't do that. It's not valid HTML. But div can contain any number of other HTML elements inside of it. So this is valid HTML. And we can say that these three paragraphs, which we'll just rename one, two, and three, we can say that they are wrapped inside a div. So what is the point of a div? Well, one key function of a div is to demarcate a section of content so that we can style it. In other words, this is partly to do with CSS. It's not pure CSS, it does have implications on HTML, which we'll discuss shortly. But what we can do is add something like a class attribute to the div. For example, let's give this a class of red. And then in our CSS styling, we can actually target that class and we can specify color red. We refresh, we see all of those paragraphs turn red. So rather than just styling single elements, we can actually style an entire block of elements. This is especially useful for something like a border, for example. So if we specify border solid one pixel black, it will wrap that border around all three of those paragraphs because they are inside the div. So on level one, a div is really just about demarcating a section of content. And in many cases, it's so we can style that content. Now let's temporarily get rid of our border. Let's refresh the page and let's change div to span. Let's save and refresh. And we can see that nothing really changes. We still have everything inside that span being colored red. So a span is really another way of demarcating a section of content, perhaps for the purpose of styling that content. So everything we've looked at so far seems to indicate that a div is the same as a span, but that's not quite true. There's an important difference between divs and spans, regardless of whether we're using CSS or not. This is just something that's inherent to HTML. There are different types of element in HTML. And the two main types of element in HTML are inline elements and block elements, and they behave differently. A div is a type of block element, and a span is a type of inline element. Now to help illustrate this concept, we're going to make those paragraphs divs. 
So let's see if we can change them all at once. This is the value of using a code editor. So we have paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three. Let's save, let's refresh. And we can see that all of the paragraphs appear on a separate line. And the reason they do that is because they are block elements. So to help illustrate how block elements work, let's add that red class to each of these divs. So we're gonna say class equals red. Let's save and refresh. And instead of color, we'll actually set background color, red. Now notice that each of those elements technically takes up the full width of the viewport. Just so you can see that a little bit clearer, what we can do is we can add a margin bottom of five pixels just to add some separation. So you can see there we have three HTML elements and each of them take up the full width of the screen or the viewport. So even though paragraph one only takes up a small amount of space to the far left of the viewport, because these are block elements, they automatically take up the entire width of the viewport. So paragraph one takes up the full width of the viewport. That means paragraph two has to appear on the next line. And paragraph two also takes up the full width of the viewport. What happens if we change those divs to spans, which are inline elements as we've discussed? So let's see the difference between how an inline element and a block element functions. So let's specify span. Of course, we need to change this to close span. Let's refresh. Let's just fix our syntax there. Now we have paragraph one, paragraph two, and paragraph three all on the same line. And that's because these are inline elements. So an inline element, it's not greedy like a block element. A block element always wants to take up the full width of the viewport, even if technically it only needs a small amount of space. Inline elements, they just take up the space that they need. So we can see the background color on paragraph one is only as wide as the text itself, paragraph one. That allows space for the next element, which is also an inline element, to appear on the same line because each of these elements are only taking up the required amount of space. So you can see there is a difference between a span and a div. A div is always going to try and start on a new line or it's always going to take up the full line, which forces other elements to start on a new line because block elements always take up the full width. Whereas spans, which are inline elements can cooperate together. They only take up as much space as required so they can appear next to each other on the same line. And we could potentially combine different types. So let's make our middle paragraph a div. And let's see how this behaves. Take a moment and think, what will we see on the page if we do this? Let's refresh. So we can see every element is still forced to a new line. So div doesn't say, okay, paragraph one has left some space. So I'm going to try and appear next to paragraph one. No, it wants the full width. It's not going to start halfway down a line because block elements are greedy. So you can see paragraph two starts on the full line. Paragraph three has no choice but to start on a new line because paragraph two has taken up the full width of the viewport. Let's see what happens if we make our first element a div and our second two elements span. Again, take a moment and think based on what you've seen, what will happen here when we refresh the page. Okay, let's refresh. So you can see paragraph one, which is the block element takes up the full width of the viewport. Paragraph two is forced to start on a new line, but since it's an inline element, and since paragraph three is also an inline element, those two elements are happy to sit side by side. So key takeaways from this lesson, spans and divs are designed for demarcating content, usually for the purpose of styling a block of content. However, there is a key difference. Divs are block elements, which always take up the full width of the viewport, whereas inline elements only take up the width that they really need and are therefore happy to share their width on the viewport with other inline elements. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Catch you in the next part of the course.